we don't want to just limit ourselves to plane waves going along the z-axis with their E-field just in the x-axis. We want to describe uh, a general plane wave that can go in any direction, with E in any direction. So a plane wave that goes anywhere as long as it's going in a straight line. This is sort of the uh, grown-up way to write a plane wave. The E field at all positions are at all times is E naught, and that's a vector, E to the J, and we'll use our complex notation, and then in here we have K dot R minus omega T. So that is a more general way to write the plane wave, and this is where we usually start, or what we usually use in optics. This is the amplitude vector. So it could be along x, y, or z, or any mix. It could be pretty much in any direction. And then if you were to break it into i, j, and k, this would just apply to all three of them. Right? This is a vector. This is just a scalar number. It's a complex function that varies in space and time, but it's still just a scalar. It's not a vector itself. Um, here we have that wave vector we talked about. So it contains both the frequency information and the direction of propagation. It has to be perpendicular to E naught. And uh, R is, you've probably seen in other physics classes, is simply the position vector. So R equals X position on the I hat plus Y J hat plus K, I'm sorry, uh, Z K hat. That is the unit vector of z, not the wave vector. OK, so is this a plane wave? How do we know this is a plane wave? So keep in mind, what makes something a plane wave is that its phase front is a plane. And that's the way that this phase front means it's constant on a plane. Basically means all the E-field vectors that are in phase together, that's the phase front, make up a plane. So let's see. So as E is constant, where? We're trying to find the geometry where it's constant. Well, E naught is a constant. When we say it's constant based on what? It's in space and time. So it's constant where k dot r minus omega t is a constant. But if it's going to be a constant uh, at one time, we need it to always be a constant. So we could just say, let's do it at time equals 0. What we really care about right now is the spatial part. Can k dot r, where's k dot r a constant? So let's say, I'm willing to say at time equals 0 and then assume that it will continue to be true after time equals 0. So at time equals 0, we need k dot r to be a constant. All right. Well, that sounds kind of scary. What is k and r? Well, you know what k dot r is. K is just some vector pointing in some direction. So it has KX, KY, and KZ, and R is just XYZ. So you know their dot product is KX and uh, the X component of KX times X plus the Y component of K times Y plus the Z component of K times Z. And those have to equal a constant. <coughs> and we're being very general, but we've just written the equation for a plane. Right? Constant times x plus a constant times y plus a constant times z equals a constant is how you mathematically describe a plane. So sure enough, just writing it this way, just having k dot r as your spatial part is all it takes to define a plane wave. And if you want to help you visualize that a little bit, I have a drawing of one here. Um, let's see. So let's look at our x, y, z axes here. Um, and what we're going to do is say, here's our plane. So we're presuming it's a plane, and I'll show you how the vectors work out. So there's your face front on a plane. That must be the k vector. That must be the e vector. So the e vector is lying in the plane. The k vector is perpendicular to the plane. And what we just talked about was how you think about r. So r is a position from some origin. So for now, we'll put the origin here. There's the r vector, and there's the k vector. 
at this point in the plane, R and K are parallel. This is the place where you go straight from the origin to here, and then you just continue in the straight line to describe K. R and K are parallel. So R dot K, or K dot R is just the magnitude of K times R. Because K dot R means K, R, cosine theta between them. Theta is 0, cosine 0 is 1. So that dot product, this is the maximum value, this magnitude times this magnitude. But as you start to move around on the plane, we could go down here. So this is another R. And we could go up here, and this is another R. So in these cases, the magnitude of R gets bigger, but the angle between K and R also gets bigger. Okay? So here the magnitudes are bigger, the magnitude of R is bigger, the magnitude of K is the same. So you may say, oh, it's bigger, but now the theta is not zero. And as the angle gets bigger, the cosine factor gets less than one. And it all cancels out. It all works out where k dot r is constant all the way across the surface. Because keep in mind that these plane waves, it's not just a little square. When you say plane wave, you mean something that's the size of the universe. It's infinitely large, bigger than the universe. Right? So it goes on uh, forever and ever. So physically, you can't really make a plane electromagnetic wave because it would require infinite energy. Right? They don't really go on forever. But mathematically, the way we're writing them, this plane just continues forever.